In Texas, 16-year-old Takesha Gilmer is looking for a place to call home when she falls for an older man who's more than willing to take her in. She looked up to him almost as a father figure. Feeling indebted, she willingly helps her lover in his new lucrative enterprise, only to wind up at the center of one of the most horrendous mass murders the area has ever seen. Let's go! I don't think Takesha ever expected that there would be four dead people at the end of that day. She cared for him and loved him. That's what empowered her to do what she did. There are hundreds of thousands of women in prison at any given time in the U.S. These are the true stories of women who committed heinous crimes in the name of love. For my man. Young Takesha Gilmer knows the side streets of Houston, Texas like the back of her hand after being kicked out of her mother's home at age 16. Takesha had a pretty tragic upbringing. She was not close to her family at all. She spent a lot of time on the streets wandering. After several months of bunking with various men and several female friends, the quiet drifter is looking for all the free handouts she can get. Takesha is wandering the street and a man drives up to her and asks her if she wants him to give her a ride. And Takesha took him up on his offer. Takesha had no real love from her parents early in her life. So this is a young woman who was looking for love in all the wrong places on her own, needed someone to take care of her. As the two chit-chat, Takesha learns his name is Daryl Beller a 41-year-old Navy veteran who lives in nearby Dickerson. He was really just a sad sack. You know, when you're just looking at his face, there was something off about his eyes. He had been shot during an armed robbery where he was the victim, and this left him with a colostomy bag. Daryl explains that he gets a disability check for his condition, which has left him unable to maintain his house. And although he's only known to Keisha a few minutes, He's hoping she'll be interested in lending a hand. Takesha thought that in exchange for cooking for him, cleaning, running errands and stuff like that, she would just have a roof over her head. He had a car, he had a house, he had money, he had food, and he had all of the security that she was not receiving from her mother. Despite his scruffy appearance, Takesha's tired of living on the streets and jumps at his proposal. She just believed that Daryl was being kind to her out of a sense of goodwill. She looked up to him almost as a father figure. Takesha finally had someone who could take care of her basic physical, mental, emotional needs. He offered her a home, offered her a safe and warm environment. But it doesn't take long for their arrangement to become a May-December romance. They're in the house together all the time, living day-to-day -day life together. And not only did they begin to get intimate physically, but Takesha really loved him. Whether it was true love or a love born out of the relationship, the caretaking that Daryl gave to her, even just the stability. It's not hard to understand why Takesha loved Daryl. But things get more permanent when just a few months later, the teen finds out she's pregnant with her older man's child. Unfortunately, with another mouth to feed on the way and no prospects of finding a job due to her lack of education, Takesha is worried about what will become of their makeshift family. So when an unexpected job opportunity falls in Daryl's lap, he's excited by the chance to make some fast cash. One of Daryl's friends approached him and asked if he was interested in running marijuana, which was something Daryl could do even with this disability. How much? They would run it down through the southern part of the United States and up the eastern coast. Even though she's expecting, Daryl doesn't think twice about asking Takesha to tag along, telling her the payoff will be an easy six figures. And it's an offer she can't refuse. Takesha and Daryl would load up his car, and during these trips, they were transporting 20 to 25 pounds of marijuana. In a lot of ways, Takesha was the perfect cover she was expecting. No one is really going to suspect a man who's traveling with his pregnant significant other of too much. Takesha went along with everything. 
all along, I believe she understood the magnitude of what she was doing, but I don't think she understood completely how bad this was. Then that fall, the duo takes a short break from their drug runs when 17-year-old Takesha gives birth to a beautiful baby boy. But Daryl isn't thinking about changing diapers. He's already focused on the future. He realized at some point the child was going to grow up and their needs were going to grow, and he needed to make some bigger moves. So he calls in his brother, a fellow dealer in Lanham, Maryland, and quickly gets a lead on something that will set his family up for life. He says he already has plenty of business on his own, but suggests Daryl reach out to his sister-in-law, Dawn Brooks, who has a wealth of connections on the East Coast. Dawn's role, once Daryl arrived with the drugs in Maryland, was to find people to sell it to. Maryland, of course, is a great place for him because he really has no footprint here. Daryl immediately contacts his regular distributor and obtains nearly 60 pounds of pot for his business venture. Daryl wasn't going to be a street-level, dime-bag, $20-a-pop dealer. He stands to make thirty or $40,000 by unloading this marijuana. Takesha certainly wasn't bargaining for getting involved in some sort of a serious crime. Her real need was to take care of her child and to take care of her man. But the new mom has no idea her decision to tag along will land them both in the middle of a bloodbath. Takesha might not have been prepared to kill on demand, but if he wanted her to, she would not hesitate. In Dickinson, Texas, Takesha Gilmer and her boyfriend, Daryl Beller, are gearing up for a trip to Lanham, Maryland to meet up with his sister-in-law, Dawn Brooks, who says she can help him move nearly 60 pounds of marijuana. She said that she knew people who were interested in buying large quantities and that if he could just get to Maryland with enough, they could sell it and make more money than they'd ever made. Before they go, Daryl packs the drugs into a blue cooler and places it in the back of his vehicle, along with two 45 caliber sidearms he purchased for protection. Takesha has Daryl's back. She knows that he's on the hook for these drugs and she's gonna help him out no matter what it takes. After leaving their son with Daryl's mother on a hot August day, the two make the 1,500-mile trek east. Two days later, the couple arrives and gets a motel room. They then head over to Dawn's apartment with the drugs to set up shop. Dawn was living with her two children, Shayla and Shakur, and her husband in an apartment above a garage at her husband's sister's house. Once the marijuana is broken down, Daryl stores the cooler behind the bathroom door and immediately hits the streets. And Daryl, Takesha, and Dawn went out to sell this bit of marijuana. Dawn directs her brother-in-law to a parking lot where they meet up with a guy who's interested in getting three to four pounds. They made the trade, got the money, everything was going well. Takesha is thrilled to see the product moving so quickly and can't wait to sell the rest so she can get back to her baby boy. Takesha loved her baby, but she also loved Daryl. So even though she didn't want to get involved in these drug sales, she had to be by his side. But at the same time, she couldn't wait to get home so that she could hold her baby. But all good things must come to an end. And when they arrive back at Dawn's apartment and speak with her sister-in-law, Mwasiti Sikyala, who was watching Dawn's kids, they learn something's terribly wrong. A woman had said there had been three men that had gone upstairs into the apartment, and they had masks and guns, and they had left about five minutes ago. Daryl raced up to the bathroom, and when he opened the bathroom door, he found nothing. His whole plan collapsed, and he was accountable for the drugs, the money they were worth. He was furious. He went crazy. Daryl, at that point, went back downstairs to the SUV, to the black bag with the 245s. He loaded up the guns. He gave one of the guns to Takesha. Daryl angrily points his pistol at the 41-year-old landlord, ordering her, Dawn, and Dawn's two kids into the apartment, while Takesha brings up the rear. He wants some answers, starting with Dawn. 
he thought that she had actually set him up by creating this large drop so that they would be out of the house and her goons could come in and take the marijuana. You better start answering these questions right now, I promise you. Dawn swears she didn't arrange for the drugs to be stolen and begs him to calm down. Meanwhile, Daryl tells his girlfriend to keep an eye on Wasiti, Shakur, and Shayla. Takesha didn't think that this would go any further, but there was plenty at stake here. She needed to keep her family together and therefore was willing to go along with something that Daryl was going to take to another place. Still frantic, Daryl tells Dawn to spill it or things will get ugly. Dawn is not telling Daryl where these drugs are. So then Daryl wants to make sure she understands he's serious and he shoots her in the leg. As the chaos continues, Daryl grows desperate, trying to figure out what to do next. It's gone, man. So he immediately contacts his supplier in Texas to let him know about the missing shipment. I'm trying to figure out now. The supplier tells Daryl, you either find out who has these drugs or make somebody pay. I'm going to take care of it. After obtaining his orders, okay. Daryl hangs up and immediately gives Dawn one last chance to come clean. He started yelling at her and said, tell me where they are. Tell me where the drugs are. Tell me who did it. When she doesn't answer, Daryl grabs a pillow from the couch and presses it against Masiti's stomach, along with the barrel of his gun. When it became apparent to Daryl that the physical pain on Dawn wasn't going to jimmy the information out of her, he tried emotional harm. Without an ounce of remorse, Daryl cocks his gun and fires once into Mwasiti. She falls in front of a five-year-old boy who's got his three-year-old sister basically wrapped in his arms trying to protect her. Where's the cooler? Dawn is really begging now, not only for her own life, but for the life of her kids because she just saw Mwasiti get murdered. As Dawn looks on, Daryl points his gun squarely at his terrified young niece and nephew and demands for the last time that she tell him where his missing drugs are. She still has no answers, despite the fact that her five or three-year-old are sitting there and are presumably next. And later, in Shreveport, Louisiana, Brandy Holmes will travel to the ends of the earth for her lover, even when he leads her down a dead-end path. After killing Mwasiti Sashala in Lanham, Maryland, while his terrified girlfriend, Takesha Gilmer, stands guard, Daryl Bellard threatens to kill his little niece and nephew, Shakur and Shayla, if his sister-in-law, Dawn Brooks, doesn't tell him where his drugs are. Dawn still has no answers. She still doesn't know who it is. Takesha was scared. She was scared for her life. All Takesha could think about was seeing her own child again. Would she be arrested? Would she go to jail? And her child was the most important thing in her life at this point. Through tears, Dawn begs Daryl to spare the little one's lives. But the crazed gunman has only one thing on his mind, his drugs, and who's going to pay for them. Daryl then shoots Shayla, the baby. No regard for human life, certainly no regard for any familial relation. He then swings the barrel towards four-year-old Shakur and pulls the trigger, sending the boy slumping onto fallen Shayla. He got shot right through his heart while he was holding his sister. This was their uncle, and he killed them in cold blood. As her children lay dead at the hands of her demented brother-in-law, Dawn can only gasp at the horror before her. That's when Daryl decides enough is enough and finishes off the final victim. Daryl just raised the gun and shot Dawn in the head. He didn't even blink. Traumatized by what she's just seen her boyfriend do, Takesha can barely move. But Daryl quickly demands that she grab her cell phone and snap back into action. Daryl tells Takesha, you take pictures of this so we can show our drug dealer that the drugs were stolen, but we took care of the people who stole them. Takesha followed Daryl's orders because quite frankly, she had trusted him, but more than anything else, she was in shock. She was numb, and therefore, she just shut down. And so, like a robot, just blindly followed whatever he had to say. Once she's documented the bloody scene, they both frantically pick up whatever bullet casings they can find and use a towel to wipe any areas they touched.
So Daryl, at that point, he's in control of the situation, just like he was in control of everything sure, Keisha did. He's got her wiping things down for prints, trying to clear anything up that might be DNA, and get anything else that they need to get out of there. Around midnight, the couple heads to a nearby motel room and showers up. Afterwards, they toss the bag full of evidence in a dumpster behind the building and lie down for a much-needed nap. Takesha went to sleep. When she woke up, Daryl was gone. He had gone back to the apartment. He goes back to continue his cleanup. He wants to make sure there's nothing there. Unfortunately for Daryl, he isn't the only one pulling into the driveway. And when he got there, he ran into Mwasidi's husband. He was looking for Mwasidi and actually asked Daryl had he seen her. And Daryl kind of pushed him off. I dropped him off earlier. Maybe they're in the house. So he went upstairs to check on his family. When he opened the door, he saw a massacre. The traumatized husband immediately calls 911, and within minutes, Prince George's County Police are on the scene. Daryl figured, I'll stick around. There's no way they can connect me to this crime. It was at that point that the police started to round up witnesses at the scene. Mercedes' husband and Daryl all ended up back at the police station. When questioned, Daryl admits he and his girlfriend were in town to sell marijuana with Dawn and that it had been stolen, but swears he had nothing to do with the bloodbath. Detectives are certain he knows more than he's letting on, so they treat Daryl as a suspect and keep him under lock and key while they head over to pick up Takesha. They found the room that Daryl had been staying in with Takesha. That room had been abandoned. Takesha had already left. Turns out, when Takesha woke up from her nap and couldn't reach Daryl, who was already in custody, she packed up and ran to the only other person she knows in town, Daryl's brother. Daryl's brother says, you ain't coming here. You ain't staying here. Get out of here. Go down the street, catch the bus, go down to the Greyhound and get out of here. So that's what she does. She jumps on a bus and she's headed out to Texas. Fortunately, police have been calling anyone associated with the victims who might have answers and Daryl's brother is on the list. When they speak with him, he immediately tells them where they might find Takesha, and she's nabbed 13 miles away while boarding a bus out of town. The detectives picked her up and said, you're coming to homicide with us. And then she had to have known she was in real trouble. Just 12 hours after the gruesome quadruple murder, Takesha and Daryl are in custody and questioned separately. Under the interrogation lights, they both quickly crumble. They let her tell lies, and eventually, she just fell apart and told the truth. Takesha had been loyal to Daryl to a fault, but after everything that he put her through, after his horrific actions, she just said that was it, the gloves were off, and she was ready to roll against him. For her role in the crime, Takesha agrees to plead guilty to four counts of first-degree murder and testify against her boyfriend to avoid the death penalty. She's sentenced to life in prison without parole. She has filed a motion to modify her sentence. Daryl is convicted of four counts of first-degree murder, one count of conspiracy to commit murder, and four counts of use of a firearm during a felony. He's sentenced to multiple life terms, plus an additional 80 years. Takesha's biggest mistake was probably not just seeing Daryl as a stabilizer, but just allowing him to become her whole world. He helped her find herself in many ways, but she also lost herself following behind him. Behind bars, Takesha deeply regrets not standing up to the man she looked up to as a lover and father figure, and for not trying to save the lives of Dawn, Mwasiti, and Dawn's two children. Even though Takesha was part of this very horrific scene and in some ways participated in it, I really do believe that she was remorseful. But also, at the end of the day, she was an adult and knew what she was doing was wrong. The moment that Takesha went along with Daryl's execution of these four people. She lost the rest of her life with her son. She lost every birthday, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas. She lost any hope she had of making a life for herself. That's what she lost.
Takesha Gilmer was willing to do the unthinkable for her boyfriend and a shot at true love. 